Good morning. It's just about 5.30 here. You've got your dial tuned to KWZFM. We have great show. And here's today's news. Minnesota to require 25% of energy served to be renewable by 2025. On May 27th, Ottertail Power Company retired to Two Lake Plant, marking the end of 100 years of coal fire energy at Ottertail the Ottertail Power announces a plan that targets approximately 30% of electricity coming from renewable resources by 2025. Renewables have become cheaper. Uh, you're seeing utilities diversify. After 17 months of construction, Ottertail Power Company's Maricourt Wind Energy Center is operational, marking the largest capital investment in the You don't have any opportunity history. to make an actual difference for the future. North and South Dakota implement voluntary renewable energy objectives for obtaining renewable resources. A state of high efficiency natural gas combustion turbine is being built to complement Ottertail Power Company's wind energy project at Maricor. So Ottertail is going through a big change. We've had people that have been willing to step up to the plate when the task at hand is needed. We have great welders here, we have machinists here. For the most part, over the years, all the years, we've been pretty self-sustained. As uh, the realities of a smaller unit being competitive in a, in a changing, in the evolving electric industry, uh, the uh, economic efficiencies of Hoot Lake really began to get challenged. Around 2012, 2013, Ottertail began to look at a baseload diversification study. And the possibilities of, you know, is it time to retire Hoot Lake plant? Not only was that a, a good plan overall and the right economic plan, but it allowed everyone to plan for that. You know, our, our commissions, our customers, our employees, giving them that time to, you know, absorb the idea of what retirement meant and reasonably plan for the future. The wind is here, right? So taking advantage of it and having that industry here and you know the landowners are making money from it. It's providing energy for, for the citizens of the state and the and the region. And so change happens and, and you better be there in front of it. Here in North Dakota, uh, we have one of the best wind uh, resources in the country. So it, it makes good sense to have wind turbines here. So this turbine on our right here was actually the first that was completed. There was a, an awful lot of thought that went into uh, where each and every single one of these turbines was placed. The Maricourt Wind Energy Center encompasses 49 square miles and we generate enough electricity to power 65,000 average American homes on an annual basis. Having Maricourt here in this community offers the opportunity for economic contribution um, especially during construction, and that carries into um, operations after the wind farm goes commercial. People that uh, work here during construction and also operations spend money locally, live locally. With this project, the landowners actually came and asked for the wind development site. 
they have been great to work with. They are all very excited to have us out there and we look forward to working with them in the years to come. When we replaced Hoot Lake, right, we talked about it being 140 megawatts out of our 800 megawatt peak. I mean, it's pretty important, but we didn't replace it with just Astoria or just Maricourt, but we replaced it with that combination of those two facilities. Maricourt wind project gives us a lot of kilowatt hours really cheap, but you can't always count on the wind blowing at a peak time when you need it. MISO, who runs our transmission system, needs to keep that perfectly balanced so that every kilowatt hour coming in, there's one going out at the same time. Well, if you have your production going up and down, how do you balance that? Well, how they can do that is with a facility like Astoria. You're bringing on 250 megawatts, and at the push of a button, the quick hitter rescue. So quick reacting. When you need electricity, when you need that energy on a short-term basis, Astoria will be there for it. When we start to look at possible generation sites, we look at needs that we have, natural gas and transmission and sometimes water. We were driving around taking a look at these areas and found a piece of land down by Astoria that was for sale that happened to be right at the intersection of one of these key sites. It really became a natural area for selection. Working with the, the local representatives, the community, the South Dakota Public Utilities Commission, everybody there has just been tremendous. So I would characterize the story as output as 245 megawatts. We have the northern border pipeline that's on our property. We pull the gas off of that. We reduce the pressure. We ensure that the temperature is correct to go into the combustion turbine. Within there, it combusts through the turbine. We have an exhaust stack for the emissions and exhaust gas. The turbine turns the generator, and then that stepped up to the proper voltages to go out on the transmission line. And from there, it's, it's out on the grid. off the line. Okay, sounds good. Take care easy, Troy. Yeah, bye. So these units that are retiring in 2021 have been in service for almost 60 years. So we've had a long history of generation, over 100 years of generation at the Hoot Lake site for Otter Tail Power Company. In 1980, the cost per kilowatt hour for wind energy was 50 cents. We've had a lot of students coming up who really, really want to work in renewable energy sector um, because they, they feel like they want to be part of a solution. I think they know that this is where the, the wind is blowing, so to speak. For the longest time, people have thought that wind energy still costs the same amount as it did 40 years ago, and it is so much cheaper. Diversity in your generation portfolio is really the key. There's never going to be one power generation method that will be the answer to all. It needs to be a balanced combination uh, of all generation, and putting the right generation in the right place when I first got into renewable energy, my thoughts were uh, I, was, I was excited about learning a new technology. I was excited about uh, being able to help make clean renewable energy, as well as you know having the opportunity to make an actual difference for the future. Electricity that gets delivered to a customer's home 
that's not stored anywhere. As you're using electricity, it has to be generated. You know, when you turn the lights on, a generator has to increase load to, to let that light work properly. The technology itself is very reliable. Combustion turbines have been used in a lot of applications. But our new approach of bringing on such a large unit in 10 minutes is probably one of the first times this has been done in the country. There's support needed throughout the entire company to execute a project like this. The ownership and the dedication of those individuals to be on board for the successful execution of a project, it's just a, it's a theme that happens all the time, always. The employees are the ones that have made this, made this plant what it is. I mean, it's, it's bricks and mortar and steel and valves and wiring, but those are the guys who keep it up day after day, week after week, year after year for all these decades. It's about a, a group that help the company provide a service for the area. The company as a whole has more of a family feel. It's encouraging to know that decisions are made locally by people who know your name. When I step back and look at what we have completed as a team and as Ottertel, you just say, wow, we did it.